Hello there, I'm Chef Johnny, and this is Texas Style Barbecue and Cuisine. Appreciate you stopping by. Tell you what, I'm excited tonight. I have got a fantastic steak sitting here in front of me. I have got a dry-aged prime porterhouse steak from Lobel's of New York that they've sent me. It is a beautiful looking steak. It's about an inch and a quarter thick, and it's dry-aged, and this is going to be a fantastic steak. So I tell you what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna I'm gonna get this cooked up, stick around for that, but also make sure I'm gonna stick around and tell you the difference between a porterhouse and a T-bone. So stick around and I'll give you the differences in those. But that's a beautiful steak and we're gonna cook it up. This porterhouse has come beautifully uh, vacuum sealed. Came in a, in a nice, kind of like anytime you get meat, it's gonna be in a nice cardboard box with a styrofoam container in front of it. Lobel's never freezes their meat. So this is a fresh porterhouse. It has uh, been dry aged, cut, and then they ship it out to you. It is not ship frozen. And I tell you what, let me get this out of here, but that is some of the prettiest marbling I've ever seen at a porterhouse in my entire life. That is a lovely, lovely steak. What can I say? Beautiful, beautiful steak. And I, what I'm gonna use on it tonight is the all-purpose savory seasoning that Lil' Bell sells. They sent me some of this also. Tastes pretty good, but I think it's gonna be pretty good on this steak. I'm gonna sprinkle it across the top, just like that. Flip it over. Get this side some with some of the red chili and the different seasonings it has in it. Let's work on the side. Got some beautiful fat, no trimming or anything like that. What you're getting here is 22 ounces of meat ready to go. We're gonna reverse here this porterhouse steak. And um, what we're gonna use is, is my pizza oven. I have the wood fired oven going. It's heating up, gonna try to get it to about that 250 degree mark. We're gonna put this steak in there, bring it up to about 130 degrees. And then I'm gonna pull it out, throw it on the grill and just sear it off some, and then we're gonna check and see what kind of steak we've got from Low Bells. I'm gonna put a probe in this nice porterhouse steak here. I do not wanna overshoot the temperature. So put it in there so I can make sure we track this and get it out at the right time. Let's take that and that is looking nice. I'm gonna leave it in there to get to that 125, 130 degrees. Then we're gonna get it out and sear it off. Steak's at 128 degrees. We're gonna open up our oven, take it out. It is nice and smoky in here. All right, there we go. See when you look at that. It's looking pretty. Got a lot of smoke on. I'm gonna set it to the side. Take my temperature probes out. Show y'all how I'm gonna set this oven up. Set my grate kind of back to the side there. Take my hoe. And I'm gonna find some coals. I'm gonna bring a bed of coals forward. Got the coals underneath where the grate goes, so I'm gonna pick my grate up. We're gonna let that get real good and hot. Then we're gonna put this steak back on here and sear it off. We have our grate good and hot. We're gonna get this door open. Put our steak up on top of that. See if we can sear it off now. Oh yeah, you can hear that sear going. Just gonna go a couple of minutes on each side, get us some nice sear marks on it. Then we'll pull it off. Let it rest, and we'll cut this thing up and see how it turned out. Now, take it. Sear. Oh yeah, got a nice sear there. A couple of minutes right there, we'll get it off. Steak looks good, we're gonna get it off. This steak is looking lovely. Smells great, that mesquite really brought in a lot of great flavor. Now, if you look at this steak, 
this is your strip. This is the strip, the big side. The small side is your fillet. So this is where your, your tenderloin is. Now I told you, I'd tell you the difference between a, uh, a porterhouse and a T-bone. A porterhouse is further back on the cow. So you get more of that tenderloin. So you almost get a full fillet right here. On a T-bone, it's further up on the animal and you're gonna get a small piece of that tenderloin. So that's the difference between your porterhouse and your T-bone. Both great steaks, but that porterhouse is gonna have a bigger section of your tenderloin on it. So that's the difference of the two. Now I'm just gonna cut this filet off, right off the bone. That is pretty. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna cut the, find the top of that T-bone and I'm gonna cut this loin off. Right there. Who goes to the side? Here's our fillet. Let's slice it and see how it turned out. Boy, I tell you what, this thing is tender. And if you look by doing that reverse sear, it's pink from top to bottom. You don't get that gray on it. Pretty, pretty steak right there. Move it to the side. And let's cut up our, our loin. Oh yeah, look at this. Beautiful, beautiful steak. Might have overshot the medium rare a little bit and got it up close to medium, but it is still moist and juicy. This dry aged steak from Lobel's is looking wonderful. That steak is looking very, very good. We're gonna get a taste over here in a minute. Before we do, I just wanna remind you, if you like this channel, go down there and subscribe it. We always do appreciate that. Hit that thumbs up for us. And the other thing I'd like you to do is check out my buddy's channel, uh, Bill, over at Chicken Fried Barbecue. Bill's about ready to hit 1,000 subscribers. He could use a little help. So if y'all have never subscribed, Bill, go over there, check out his channel, see Chicken Fried Barbecue. I'm gonna put a, a link in here for him so it'll be easier for you to find him. But great guy. He has got some great, great barbecue coming out. Does a lot of competition stuff. But Bill's got a young channel that's doing very good. So check him out. Go, Charlie. Charlie wants to try some. You like steak? <laughs> Charlie likes steak. Let me tell you, how was it? Was it good? There you go. I think it's approved by Charlie, without a doubt. But anyways, just a wonderful steak. Try this uh, strip side. He's coming from the front and wants some more. Get down. You got to get down, Charlie. Get down. There you go. He liked it a lot. Mm, let me tell you. Without a doubt, probably the best porterhouse steak I've ever tasted in my life. This is tremendous. That, that mesquite wood added a great, great flavor to it. It's moist. You know, these, these are dry aged for up to six weeks. Uh, they're at low bells. Only 2% of the meat in the United States is prime. So you're talking about a very, very small piece and you have low prime and high prime. Low bells only serves high prime. And without a doubt, this, this is great. Mm. Dry age up to six weeks. Ship to your door. Probably the best porterhouse I've ever tasted in my life. This is great. Tender, flavorful, moist. That marbling ran all the way through both sides of this of this porterhouse steak. And again, best porterhouse I've ever had in my life. Tremendous. Man. There you have it, dry aged prime porterhouse from Low Bells in New York. Great, I'm gonna have a link down below for them. Check them out. And if you like bringing in some prime steaks, like eating prime, they'll ship them right to your door for you. So get hold of Low Bells, check them out, check out all their meats, but wonderful, wonderful porterhouse. Thank you for stopping by. If you enjoyed it, remember that thumbs up and remember to share us. Thank you for stopping by Texas Style Barbecue and Cuisine, and we're going to see y'all down the road. How them boys put food away beats all I've ever seen.